So I'm here with Peggy Sorensen at the Desert Kitchen Urban Farm and I just wanted to talk with Peggy about what she does and how she got herself established. You can see behind me a little section of her yard. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful oasis. So Peggy, thank you for letting me interview you. I do appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to ask you uh, just a few questions and number one is what inspired you to start your own urban farm? Well, I started gardening back in the 80s in Michigan and I fell in love with gardening. But then I moved to Arizona and I did some gardening but it wasn't until I learned about the Valley Permaculture Alliance mm. that gave me more ideas of huh urban garden. I've always wondered what would happen you couldn't buy from the grocery store and huh. I didn't want to be stuck like yeah. nothing to eat. Yeah, because you know I am here quite often so I do notice that you have a lot of uh, local and native plants, desert plants thrown and mixed in throughout your urban farm. Can you explain why you incorporate those desert plants instead of just the typical garden or just the typical fruit trees? I'd love whatever will volunteer. In your garden, in regards to the native plants, mm -hmm. what are on your urban farm, what are some of your favorite local plants that you utilize mm -hmm. um, in the desert kitchen with cooking so that you can incorporate it in your food and in your diet? It all comes down to what most people call weeds. <laughs> yeah. What is a weed? <laughs> so the mallow, wild mustard, you know, the London rocket, uh, chickweed, and then purslane in the summer, Yum. and lamb's quarters. Excellent. Well, what about at your urban farm, the desert kitchen? What would you say is your best successes with growing or planting, or what plants? Do you have the most and best success with? I would say sweet potatoes. Ooh, yum, yum. They are almost foolproof. Well, I planted sweet potatoes uh, a few years back, and every year they just come back automatically. Plus, you have the, the leaves that you can eat during the summer, so you have a summer green. Very good. And what would you say is your worst experience mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with gardening and permaculture and in your farm in regards to plants. I think the year that I did not keep a handle on the edible weeds, because I loved them, uh -huh. but when I let them go to seed mm -hmm. the next year, it was much harder. Uh, so now, uh -huh. that mulching, chop and chopping is actually creating your own mulch from the plants to the weeds that you pull up and instead of throwing them away or composting them, you're just dropping them in the soil and that creates a good top layer of mulch, right? Yes. I like to uh, return the nutrients to the soil. I like living mulches as well. Anything that I trim or anything uh, that I pull up, I lay on the ground to just not have any exposed soil. Okay. It, it provides moisture retention and you know, the worms will come up and they just decompose and decompose. So uh, I have a question in regards to that uh, in a lot of gardening books it actually says not to do that because it's going to invite pests. Mm -hmm. I mean you have a beautiful flourishing urban farm. Do you find that by doing the chop and drop and by mulching that it actually invites pests in? It, it invites insects. Okay. Whether they're pests or not but they are insects and worms that work the soil and they eat the matter. I think that it all works together, so. Well, I love that. It sounds like you don't look as these, what people want to call pests or weeds, <laughs> as a nuisance. You invite these in because they are part of this awesome ecosystem that creates this closed system within your urban farm that helps function. I mean without those worms, without you know those bugs, your soil probably wouldn't be as lovely, right? That's what I think. So if you could give me three words of advice or three tips in regards to 
I'm creating my own urban farm. What would those three tips be? Because technically that's what you've done. You have created this beautiful oasis because you got this I mean, a good sized piece of land that's completely covered in edible um, or medicinal vegetation. And you utilize it. And not only is it a farm or a large garden because you're able to eat out of it, but it, the style, you've incorporated permaculture here. You have all the different systems. You have the fruit trees, you have the irrigation, you have the bugs, you have the composting, you have the flowing garden. I mean, there's just so many different things that you have. So you've taken gardening and turned it into an urban farm. Then you added it, this finesse of permaculture into it, and you've created this oasis. Yes, and I believe that when you have an urban garden, you're surrounded by homes with these perfect manicured lawns. And you want a garden, and in my entire yard, yeah, there's yeah. a garden. <laughs> And I don't want it to look like a farm necessarily. I want yes. it to look nice. I want nice landscaping. If you have the basis, if you have the bones of some a nice landscape. So I did put in a patio and walkways so that even if it looks messy all around, if the walkway and the patio is is cleaned up. So it's more inviting. Except, it's more acceptable okay. to your neighbors. Because I don't have grass, so I felt like I needed something. Some people will just have a nice lawn, and then yeah. their edges will have... The garden, yeah. Yes. I didn't want grass, so this was my way of having an acceptable landscape. Nice. So number one is you laid a foundation for your um, design. So right. you laid out these beautiful, and we'll walk, we'll take a walk in just a moment through her yard. Um, but you laid this beautiful pathway. You've got round gardens here, and you've got straight gardens here, and you've got fruit trees. And, you know, it's just beautiful. I love the setup. So number one, you have a great foundation. Mm -hmm. So what would be another you tip? You have to think of water in the, in the desert. So I had gutters installed, and I brought in two water tanks. Nice. Plus automatic irrigation. The only thing I haven't done that I really wish I had done is put in gray water system and okay. I would highly recommend that. And what would be the third thing? I would say start small. I mean it's fun. I started big. Uh, I would plant all over the yard. So you get to see what grows where. If you have the time, plant everywhere and see what works. So experiment. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, do you want to go take a quick uh, little tour and just kind of look around and sure. see how the flowing garden? All right. <laughs> All right. So, what side of the garden? This is the east side of the house, right? right. Okay. And what do you have going on back here? Well, I have, I have. Uh, what is this? Cilantro. cilantro. I have some mallow, wild lettuce. I see calendula, I see mm -hmm. various types of lettuces here. Right. Um, isn't there chickweed and stuff back oh, yeah, here too? Oh yeah, there's a lot of chickweed. Well. And over here we have fava beans. Fava beans. Let's look these? at <laughs> Wow, put your hand up to that again, Peggy. Oh, look isn't at those. That amazing? And those are delicious. Uh, we actually harvested a bunch of those earlier. Mm -hmm. um, oh look. All right. Here, there's a <sighs> couple right here. And look at this little fatty. And I love how you don't do single crops. Right. I mean, you have probably a 10 or a dozen or different types of things, you know, five to maybe a dozen different things just in this one little area. Look at this. This is your, your mulch. Your, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Brother. So right behind you here, isn't this a native plant to the Sonoran Desert? Yes, this is a globe mallow. It volunteered. Now this is awesome. Can you um, explain <laughs> what's a bed frame doing here, Peggy? <laughs> oh my God. That is an amazing example of reusing. And, and this is a free, trellises can cost hundreds of dollars at this store. And yet you took trash and turned it into a trellis for your peas. What is this beautiful plant down yeah. here? Is that a... It's a yerba mansa. Very nice. It is this is almost, It's almost as tall as me. Yes, it, it this this will grow back every year. Nice. How old is this jalapeno? 
several years. So you planted this several years ago, and you don't have to buy jalapenos at this store. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just continues. At least it grows. Look how thick this. Uh, I mean, that's like a tree. Then I have blackberries. Nice. They haven't produced yet. And so here's the 260 gallon tank. And it is fit well connected. Uh, nice. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So here looks like the beginning of some fruit trees. Yes. And this is your lemon. On the other side, I have elderberry. And flower. Oh wow! And look, there's grapes. Here's some clusters. I love this, uh, Peggy, that you can neglect plants in your yard and they still produce for you. Like that is awesome, right? It is. Yeah, that's that. It's definitely a blessed life. Yeah, Look well, at this. You've got mind. weeds. You've got peas. Mm -hmm. Is that a sunflower? Mm -hmm. or, or, okay. So yes, I have more apples. Wow, it's so many apples. I have goji berry. Here's some hollyhock. Yeah. Um, orange trees. And what's going on back here? See this. There you go. You've got, I mean, just looking at this, there's so many different plants again. What is that? A milk thistle. And look, there's another reuse. Right. It, it was a bad part of a bunk bag. <laughs> that is awesome. I I'm see bad. little green sprouts in there. Kale. Kale. Look at this. All this calendula you didn't plant. What is this tree right here behind you? Lime. Mexican lime. What? Potato sweet lime. potato just everywhere. And see, these were all along here. I this whole thing, fun. huh? Oh, look at this. You have a this you have a, a blossom. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know. Didn't see that. And there's, there's grapefruit. grapefruit. So you have, here's a rose bush. And look, here's another uh, example. Oh, yeah. These are the wild flowers. Yes, yeah, uh, pineapple weed. I have a white sapote that I and you're just using them as a mulch and to keep the roses off the ground. Right. It's awesome. Well, that flower was beautiful nice. earlier and he, yes. he withered in the they sun. Look at that. Here's a, a caper. Delicious yes. caper. There's a whole bunch of them. Sugar cane and tomatoes. What, what was that again? Asparag as asparagus? Asparagus, right. Tomatoes. Beautiful. Beautiful example of what could be done. And this is a pomegranate tree. Right. So beautiful. Look at those flowers. I have done. Oh, I know. These are beautiful. Let me just look at this. It's so gorgeous. The washer and dryer broke. The, the That's dryer, what that is. The, for burning anything that. I love how you utilize what you have and in no waste you're totally reducing your carbon footprint. You know that? Oh awesome. Mm -hmm. Isn't this here your uh, 440 you this said? 660. Yes. This is the wild, but you know what? It might be wild and woolly to most people, but I see lots of beauty. You got medicine, you got flowers, mm -hmm. you got, you know, this looks... Orcha, 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 something like that. Yeah, it needs some water. This side needs water. More lettuce, mm -hmm. wild flowers. I mean, food everywhere. Look at this. This Wild tobacco. <laughs> this, is, this is the mallow, and you can yeah. just eat this. Wild tobacco for pain or smoke. Yeah. Um, arugula, growing the seed. Wow, it's huge. Oh, I have um, Jerusalem artichokes here. And then you got this beautiful, look, I mean, look at this for you guys. Like, look at this. Yeah, this is really this, enjoyable to, to sit out on the this patio. This is just, I mean, it, it's its an oasis is what it is. This is like the central part of her garden. And I just love this outlook. It's the rest of the way, but we'll walk through here and it's got rocks. And here's a little, what, tropical area? Right. The low quad. Um, this is beautiful. Wind. Look at that. Um, had bananas growing, so I should have them later this year. It's perfect. It's cute. Whatever I feel like putting them in there and the, the nice and still as big as me as tall as me well i think this is a beautiful place to end right by that and grape um i just want to thank you peggy sure, i really appreciate you, you know you and the desert kitchen and everything that you do and supporting the the movement of urban farming and just grow your own food yes i hope you i've know? inspired someone to at least 
do something. Yeah, do it.